Howdy, y'all. Thank you for joining us today for this unboxing of Marvel Champions, the card game hero pack, Rogue. Feels like it's been forever since I've done one of these, and this is one of the ones I'm more excited about doing. Just as I'm curious about how this character is going to play and add in. It was one of the questions I was asking ever since I saw it was coming out. But we're going to go through this. So if you're new to this, what these hero packs are is they're an expansion that basically is going to give you a deck that is ready to play immediately, which is one of the things I really like about this game. You do not have to buy them all. I'm a completionist. I love the game, so I buy every deck, even the characters I don't know. But um, for the most part, the cool thing is if someone, one of your friends owns the base game, you just have, and you just like this character, you can just go buy this character and you can just play. It's ready to go immediately. Good to go, straight out of the box. And just to show that, after this unboxing, I'm going to do a I'm going to do a video where I'm going to put Rogue against. I've been do I usually do Rhino, who's the starter character, but this one's going to be Rogue versus um, Sabretooth and the Brotherhood. And I'm going to do a playthrough just with this deck unchanged and see how it fares up. And then that way, we can see if it's a good enough deck without really having to make changes. I mean, changes are always going to make it better, right? But anyways, enough talk. Let's get into the video. So you can see on the back here, it pretty much kind of says everything I already kind of said. This is a 60-card hero pack. It has a pre-built rogue deck along with new cards that can be added to any of the other hero decks. Also, another thing they do, it used to be in the old days, and then with some of the recent ones, they did it, but... The last few went back to this, and I like this a lot, is it would add some extra cards. So if you wanted to go to the other aspects, things that are unique that you may need in order to go to those other aspects, because if you're new to the game, there are four aspects. This is going to be built into one of those aspects. I'm going to guess defense, because I haven't seen one for a while. Um, but yeah, it's going to be built in one of those four aspects. And they usually give you some extra cards that would help you build into the other aspects if you want to go there. Um, but instead, they started doing a modular set for the villains to where you could have a villain in there. And or a different, like, while you're doing whatever, like Sabretooth is going after the Senators, what I'm going to go against. Then they would have this little side modular thing that's going on, this, like, side encounter, basically. Along with it, she's going to have her own unique nemesis, which is Mystique. All right, let's get into this. Um, there is, if you want to check before you open yours, there's going to be a cut or a tape here that needs to be cut. I already pre-cut this before the video, but that'll let you know if your product, if your, uh, if your product has been tampered with. But you can also check because you should open it up and it should have a pack of cards still sealed. And then you want to look underneath this flap, and it should have the little rule book, and then that should be it. All right. I know I've been talking too long, and this is probably going to be a longer video, but like I said, this is one I've been looking forward to playing. One of my favorite X-Men, Rogue. So inside, you're going to get one of the poster. You're going to get a little poster, which is going to be, I know I'm zoomed way in, of whatever you see here is the picture. It's going to be that same poster. But then on the back of it, you're going to see the hero pack. And the hero pack is, are the rules for it. It's going to show any rules that you may need just in case you don't have some of the expansions. So you need to know some of this stuff. A couple rules, clarifications. And then right here, it's going to show you what the deck is, which I said defense. I should have said protection. Sorry, but I was right. I guessed right. Protection here. Not only was it I was thinking that, I just couldn't think of any other thing she would be. Like Wolverine was obviously going to be aggression. And I didn't see her being... Um, like, I, I, I can kind of see her being aggression, but not really. But I was thinking, I bet protection. I can see protection. And sure enough, she was. And if, to name the other aspects, there's aggression, which is, of course, going to be all about combat. And there's justice, which is going to be about thwarting the scheme that the villain's trying to pull off. And then the other one's leadership, where you're going to be bringing out other allies and having them do the stuff for you. I didn't see her really fit. The best fit I saw was protection. So I guess right on that. All right. I'm also going to do the Gambit video later also, but that'll be a separate video if you want to check that out. Um, all right, let's open this pack of cards and see what this is all about. All right. 
We open this pack. And I won't go through every single card, but I'm going to try to go through most of these. So right off the bat here, we have her hero card. We have Rogue here. She has two thwart, two attack, two defense, so two down the road. And then she has skin contact. It basically is an action attached, touched to another character. You gain each of the attached character's traits until the end of the round. Kind of exactly what I guessed she was going to do. I just didn't know how they were going to do it. If it was you play a card and you steal it or whatnot. But this is going to have a card which you put it on them. And then you have their powers. And I said it's probably going to be traits. I, I can see um, it not being good for certain ones. But yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, it's got to do, do that. That's the only thing I can think of the way to do her abilities. But forced response after the player phase begins. Find touched and set it aside. So... You're not going to be able to carry it over. It's going to make you have to go redo every single time, which is cool. That way you don't absorb something, go knock someone out, and then now just keep that power. So, And on the back, of course, we have her Alter Ego, Anna Marie, 3 Recovery, and it shows a setup. Set your touched upgrade aside. And withdrawn, forced response after you change to this form. Keep set touched aside. So if you switch there, it's making you have to go get it off to the side. But it is cool that they put it to the side and it's going to be, I bet it's going to be a permanent. That way it can't be destroyed, blah, blah, blah. But makes it where you always have access to it. Hence the um, mutant abilities. So here we go. Touched her first card. So what we're going to see here is the first cards are going to be the, the, it's normally 15. This one's 16 because this one's going to be off to the side. But these first cards are the ones that if you're going to play Rogue, no matter what of those four aspects you're going to play in, you have to have these cards in your deck included, minimum. So here's the first one, Touched. It is an upgrade. I was wrong because I was like permanent, but I, I think about that. Yeah, permanent means it comes out and stays out. No, it is an upgrade. And it says, if Touched is attached to, and you got to look, a minion, Rogue's attacks gain overkill. So not only are you going to gain the traits, but you're going to gain overkill because if you do it to a minion. If you attach it to a villain, she gains Retaliate 1, which Retaliate 1 means anytime she's attacked, she's going to do one damage back to them automatically, whether they damage her or not. Ally, Rogue gains the Aerial trait. So if she uh, t touches an ally, one of your own, I didn't think, of, I didn't think about that actually. I didn't think about whether she could touch your allies or other people and gain their stuff pretty good Ariel she gets flying which I'm assuming she's gonna have something in here that's gonna say if she's Ariel she gets this hero she gains stalwart which means she can be it tell you, it's it's basically harder to stun and confuse her so pretty good especially especially since you get all whatever this is plus the traits so and I did not realize it's going to allow you to touch uh, allies and heroes. I didn't think about that. That's actually pretty cool. And it makes sense. Oh, sorry if I had that little camera. It makes sense. Usually the first card that you always have to add in is always a ally that you're going to guarantee have in there. And it makes sense. It's going to be Gambit. I'm predicting, I guess, Gambit will have Rogue in there. So three cost, three hit points, two thwart. To attack with a special gambit enters play with three charge counters on him okay as an interrupt which the interrupt is whenever he attacks it's got the special there when gambit attacks remove one charge counter from him deal one damage to an enemy so that means he can attack someone else and do one damage somewhere else or do an additional damage so you're basically going to get three three so three times three you're going to get about nine damage off of him seems really good then we get Rogue's Jacket as an upgrade for one. While Touched is attached to a friendly character, Rogue gets plus one thwart, so she does help scheme. And while it's attached to an enemy character, she gets plus one attack. So whether you need her to scheme or whatnot, cool. Going Rogue, I'm assuming it's going to have something to do with the aerial. Hero action for two. Event, remove three threat from a scheme if Rogue has aerial. Remove two additional threat. Retaliate. She confuses the enemy. Stalwart. 
draw a card. So depending on what she got, because you touch someone, she's going to do extra stuff. I like that. And there's two of those, three of those. Cool. Southern Cross, three cost event, attack, hero action, attack, deals six damage to an enemy. And then once again, if she's got aerial, it does an additional two damage, so you can get up to eight damage. Retaliate, stun that enemy, or stalwart, draw one card. And she has three of those. Man, that's a lot of damage she can dish out for three. I like it. Energy transfer, two cost event, hero action. Attach touch to a character other than rogue and deal two damage to that character. Heal two damage from rogue and ready her. You gain each of the attached character's traits until the end of the round. Okay. So a way of healing a little bit. Two of those. Bulletproof Bell, one a cost event, hero interrupt defense. When an enemy with touched attached to it attacks, prevent all damage from that attack and gain a tough status card. At the defensive player in me likes that, especially knowing now she's protection. Superpower adaptation, zero cost event, hero action. If touched is attached to a friendly character. Search its owner's discard pile for an event that belongs to the same classification as that character. And it even says here, identity specific, aspect, or basic. Hmm. So she could use their special cards. I really like that. Man, I'm going to say that a lot in this one. Can't wait to play this character. Of course, if we see the trend right... Well, it's been broken a few times, especially the last time. We see the trend right. I'm gonna I've been looking forward to this one, but I'm gonna enjoy Gambit more, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm really liking this. Anyways, add that event to your hand. One, two, three of those. So that's all of her special cards. So next what we're gonna see in her deck's gonna be the protection cards. And these should be new cards mostly. Uh, or they could be some old ones. Um, usually you always see whatever aspect it is, you're going to see a new one, a new character for that. So we see here protection. So we have a new protection ally. It is Iceman, Bobby Drake, three costs for three hit points, one thwart, two attack. Iceman enters play with three freeze counters on him. As a response, after a minion enters play, remove one freeze counter from Iceman to stun that minion. So it makes it where that minion... Basically, it gives you time to take care of that minion. I actually like this, whether um, whether it's in a... I, I, I want to throw this in my regular protection deck, so uh, which, which is Doctor Strange at the moment. I think that'd be kind of cool. I like it. We got another protection ally here. We got Karma. I'm not even going to try to butcher that name. We got four uh, uh, cost for one hit point with zero thwart, zero attack. Well, let's see what she's all about. After you play Karma from your hand, choose a non-elite minion. While Karma is in play, take control of that minion and treat it as a controlled ally with a blank text box. Its thwart is equal to its printed scheme and, it's, and it takes two consequential damage after it thwarts or attacks. So this allows me to throw this protection ally in and be able to do what I wanted to do with uh, Jean Grey, which... Sounds cool. I like that ally also. So far, um, I like all these, whether I think they're going to be ones I'll always look at for protection. Two costs, two dam or two hit points, one thwart, one attack. Play only if your identity has the X-Men trait. All right. I, like, that's what I like about these. They didn't say that, so I was like, but this one, you have to be an X-Men. Uh, it's because it's a cheap with toughness. That's why. Whereas Luke Cage yeah, has toughness, more stuff, but he's more expensive, of course. All right, so that's some new allies. Now we have Unflappable here. Um, I, I want to say this one already came out, but I could be wrong, so we're going to go over it. One cost upgrade. Play under any player's control. Max one per player. As a response, after you defend against an attack and take no damage, exhaust unflappable to draw a card and normally they're going to give you if you're new you're going to get a play set of any new cards they give you 
but a play set is three and typically if it's a new card they give you three so maybe this isn't new but if it isn't they give you a play set there and a play set for allies is one so and they even have a unique symbol here which says you can only have one of that name but it also means one of that name and the secondary name so in the case of like um oh my goodness my brain's escaped me right now um spider-man there's multiple Spider-Mans, and there's like Spider-Man Mo Miles Morales. You can have him out along with Spider-Man Peter Parker as the ally. So, all right. Two cost upgrade. Judoka skill. So, Judo basically uses three Judo counters. So, uses means you put three counters on there, and when those counters are gone, this goes away. Max one per player. Interrupt when you defend against an enemy attack. Remove one judo counter from here. That enemy gets minus two attack for that attack. So just another way of three of those. Basically another way of um, reducing damage being done to your, you or your allies or heroes or allies. Yep. Yeah. All right. Preemptive strike. One cost event. Hero interrupt defense. When a boost card is turned face up while the villain attacks, cancel all the boost icons on there. Then deal one damage to the villain for each boost icon canceled this way. I like that. That's pretty good, actually. For those times when a big three comes up, you can just cancel them out. Now, it is only on attack, so you wouldn't be able to do it on a scheme, but that's fine. I like it. All right. Not today. One cost event, defense, uh, hero interrupt. When your hero defends against an attack, it gets plus two defense for that attack. If you take no damage from that attack, remove two threat from a scheme. For a second there, I thought I was reading uh, one of my other favorite cards. And I was like, oh, they just gave it another name. I got multiples. No, but this is still kind of cool. It lets you remove some threat for one and not take as much damage. I do like, the only reason I hesitated at the beginning of that, I thought I was rereading this to make sure I didn't read something wrong on there and think something different. All right, so this one we've definitely seen before, but it's just one of the new resources. Uh, resources are just used to pay for your cards if you're new. Um, max two per deck, hero interrupt when you spin the card to play a defense event, draw one card. So it lets it refill itself. And it does, it says max two per deck, they're only gonna give you two of those. All right, so now the rest of the deck these are basics. They're gray. It means you can have them in your deck. Because normally, like if you've built this protection like she's built, you can only have protection cards in your deck, unless something says otherwise. But you can have basics in there also. Basics can go in any deck. And normally we do see a new basic ally. We have one here, Moira McTaggart, for two cost support. Oh, she's not an ally. Sorry. I said ally, but she's not an ally, but she's a support. I just saw the name, so that threw me off. Persona, play only if your identity has a mutant trait. Okay. As a response, after a mutant alter ego changes into hero form, you exhaust Moira McTaggart. That's hero, that hero's controller draws one card. So if you're playing with a bunch of people who are playing X-Men also, or if you're in your alter ego form, then you should draw an extra card. Hmm. X-Gene, one cost upgrade. Play only if your identity has the mutant trait, max one per player. Resource, exhaust X-Gene, generate a wild resource for an identity specific event. So it's giving you a resource, but it can only be used for your identity specific events. But since she can steal other people's identity events, this seems pretty good for her actually. So we should see three of those. Beauty and the Thief, we've seen these. This makes me think even more. We're going to see this in Gambit's deck, and then we should see probably her as the ally in there. Two-cost event. A team up, Gambit and Rogue, which means Gambit and Rogue both have to be out, whether it be your ally or someone else playing Gambit. Max one per deck. Hero action, attack slash thwart. You get to deal four damage to an enemy and remove four threat from a scheme. Seems good. And then we just see some new art. These are in, I think, staples in almost any deck. We just see the new arts, which we saw in the Mutant Genesis box for your genius, your strength, and your energy. All right, so that would be your deck. So if you were going to play, you would just have your hero there. You would shuffle this up. Well, actually, 
I don't think this goes in the deck right. I think it tells you, yeah, set up, you set it to a side. So you would set those aside, shuffle this deck up, and you're good to go, ready to play. So we'll be doing that against Sabretooth. Next, you're gonna have to have these cards also. Uh, first one's always gonna be the obligation. You're gonna hand this to whoever's setting up the game because this is gonna get shuffled into the bad guy deck. And if this obligation gets drawn by somebody, in an encounter, it goes to you. It's an obligation you have to deal with. So her obligation is deadly touch, give to Anna Marie player, it tells you there. If touched is attached to a friendly character, deal two damage to that character and discard this card. If touched is not attached to a friendly character, place two threat on the main scheme, discard this card. So she does not have a way to get rid of this card. A lot of times, the, they have a way that you can just get get rid of it out of here. This, it's always going to be back in the deck, which, if you know the character makes sense, she just can't get rid of the obligation. It's always there. It's always on. So, Deadly Touch. And then the next cards we're going to see, and even let you know here, one through five, uh, one of five. So, I'll let you know there's five cards. This is going to be her nemesis. Shadows of the Past, and we saw it with... Um, there's a card called Shadows of the Past that goes into the Encounter deck, and the, Myst the Mysterio deck had a way I saw of doing it now, um, where it's going to tell you to go get this Nemesis out of play. So this you have to have it with Rogue, but this will stay out of play unless something tells you to bring it into play. And here it is, Mystique. She's a one scheme, one attack, six hit points. Toughness, which means she gets uh, toughness on her, which means the first damage she takes is reduced completely. Villainous, which means she gets boosted on her attacks. And Forced Response. After Mystique engages you, search the encounter deck, discard pile, and set aside area for a copy of the Misled Treachery and shuffle it into your deck. So I'm sure we're going to see what that Misled Treachery is here. Also, you're going to see her side scheme that she's trying to pull off, Mystique's manipulations. While she knows Mystique can be trust, can't be trusted, Rogue still finds it hard to reject the woman who raised her. When defeated, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a copy of the misled treachery and shuffle it into your deck. So I'm assuming that's what we're going to see is the other three cards are going to be the misled treachery. Just also going to ramp up the threat that's going on the scheme. And then also it's going to start with two per player on it. All right, let's see what this misled treachery is since everything goes to it. Misled treachery. When revealed, shuffle this card into your deck. This card gains Surge. Okay, so it's going to be a card that when you draw it... Um, so when you draw this as an encounter, it's going to go into... Or because of this thing, it's going to go into your deck. And then it's also going to gain Surge, which means you will draw another card from the encounter deck. So... As a force response, after this card enters your hand, place two threat on the main scheme. So it's going to enter your hand, bog your hand down for one card for that turn, add two threat to the scheme, and then you're going to discard this at the end of your turn, basically. And yeah, I assumed all the last three were going to be those. But alright. So that's everything you would need in order to play with your friends. Now, it lets you know here, stop, that was your deck, you're good, you got everything you need. And then on the back of this, it's going to let you know, this in case you wanted to rebuild that deck, all the cards that were in it, or if you got them mixed up somehow and you want to rebuild that deck, it gives you everything there. So next we're going to see, and I already saw because when I flipped it, normally there's going to be a modular set, we see it there, but it does give you a few extra cards, which are probably going to have something to do with if you want to build her to a different um, aspect, which in this case it's leadership. We got the med lab here, one cost support, max one per player is a location. As a response, after an ally is defeated by consequential damage, consequential damage is the stuff that an ally takes whenever they attack, uh, exhaust med lab, place it here. So instead, the consequential damage goes here. I like that actually. Uh, limit one ally at a time. Alter ego action, exhaust med lab, play the ally here as if it was in your hand. It enters play exhausted. I'm sorry, I'm, my brain just went on different ways I think I can use this, so I think I'm going to try to figure that out. I kind of like this. 
I just see if I'm gonna put it in my, my main my main leadership deck is Ant Man, so I was thinking if I wanted to put it in there instead, I shouldn't be wasting time. Anyways, so next we have the Reavers. The Reavers are basically it said there's gonna be a modular set here, and it said it's eight big, so eight cards. This is just something you can shuffle in to have the Reavers show up. Like I said, we're gonna put against Sabretooth, who's gonna be going after Senator Kelly, and then. The Reavers will be there just causing, being a nuisance. Now, when I do that, when I do the thing where I play with the starter deck unchanged, or the deck of Rogue unchanged with uh, Sabretooth, I'm going to mix these in. So we are going to see this in that playthrough. But here we got Donald Pierce, a minion, one scheme, one attack, six hit points. Teamwork Reaver. Sorry, I decided to do a little cut there and go look it up. So Teamwork means that if there's another Reaver out and this Reaver comes out, that other Reaver is going to activate against the person this one goes against. So it's basically making them, they're using teamwork. They're working against you. They're working together against you. And Villainous, which means that you get a boost card, it gets a boost card whenever it attacks or schemes. These traits as teamwork and Villainous, now I'm not sure how they would work if she steals them. I guess if they don't get them, but... Um, Basically, that's when she gets to steal whenever she puts that thing on them. But force response after Donald Pierce engages you, reveal the topmost Reaver minion from the discard pile. So he can bring other... Yeah. When he does his thing, he's going to be bringing more Reavers out. So you got to take care of him fast or you're going to get a bunch of Reavers against you. Then we got Skullbuster. Two scheme, two attack, five hit points, teamwork, Reaver, toughness. After Skullbuster engages you, place one threat on the main scheme for each Reaver minion engaged with you. So, yep, they're just going to be building up against you. Bonebreaker, one scheme, three attack, five hit points, teamwork Reaver, toughness, forced interrupt. After Bonebreaker engages you, take one indirect damage for each Reaver minion engaged with you. Indirect is just damage that you have to spread out amongst all your uh, cards or characters. Wade Cole. One scheme, two attack, three attack, uh, three hit points. Teamwork Reaver. When revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a copy of the cybernetic enhancement attachment and attach it to Wade Cole. And then shuffle. Then we have Murray Reese. Teamwork Reaver. When revealed, oh, I didn't say one scheme, two attack, three hit points. When revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a copy of the cybernetic enhancement attachment and attach it to Murray Reese. And then we get. Their side scheme, based upon the Reavers, when defeated, the player who defeated the scheme discards cards from the encounter deck until a Reaver minion is discarded, then reveals that minion. This means you're also going to have to, as long as this is out, whoever the first player is is going to have to do an extra encounter during the villain phase, and this is going to get five threat on it, so it takes five threat to be removed before it goes here. And then I figured, yeah, we're going to see two of these, but that cybernetic enhancement that they go after is an attachment. It's going to give them plus one attack. Attached to a minion. Otherwise, this card gains surge. Attached minion cannot take damage. That sucks. Force response. After attached minion attacks, discard cybernetic enhancements. So it's basically like a toughness that is going to guarantee that they're going to get to attack, which means they're going to activate all the other Reavers. So Sounds really annoying. Mike probably going to need that of protection. But we'll see how she does. Um, with that, I know this video has been long enough, so we're going to get this uh, sleeved up and shuffled up and see how she fares against Sabretooth. Other than that, thank you for watching and have a great day.